Hi, this is Little Dwarf playing games while rumbling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because I can. And this time I'll be playing Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic's Obscura, Blind. Now, uh, I consider myself rather lucky because despite this, this game's age, it's almost 20 years old at this point, I have managed to avoid all spoilers about it. I literally know nothing about the story of this game, but I am very eager to play it because it has been developed by Troika Games, who also made, they also made Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, which is actually probably my favorite game of all times, so I expect some good story, some interesting characters, and generally a lot of atmosphere from this game. Uh, what else? I expect also this playthrough to be rather long, those older RPGs tend to be quite long, so uh, there will be timestamps in each description. Uh, if you want to skip a particular section, you can always look in the description uh, for a timestamp. I will try to describe at least roughly what I'm doing in a particular part of, of the video. And uh, before I begin and start uh, with creating my character, I would also uh, like to make a, a quick shout out to the people from the CRPG Discord. If any of you are watching, uh, then you know it's nice to have you here. Please let me know how much I sucked while playing this game, because uh, I most likely will suck a lot. I'm not necessarily good at games, I just like them nonetheless. Uh, also, before I begin, I have to at least very briefly comment on the music here in the in the main menu because I love it. It's beautiful. Uh, it, it, it's, it has a nostalgic, almost like tragic feel, and it makes me think of like the world that is slowly changing and something is being lost in the process. You know, it's it's this kind of melancholic. Uh, melancholic sound of, of, of an age gone by or something, which I guess might tie into the themes of the game, I don't know, because I've never played, but judging from uh, the artwork on the cover and from the title itself, it seems to be at least partially concerned with the conflict between magic and technology, uh, so I wonder where will, where will this go? Uh, also, actually, even the title itself is kind of interesting, because Arcanum is a Latin word that means something along the lines of a secret or a deep mystery, especially of like a mystical or occult kind. And Obscura is uh, something shadowy, something... Uh, something... Uh, 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 what's the word? Engulfed in darkness, something along the lines of that. So uh, it would translate to, you know, a deep mystery of, uh, of, of shadowy magic and steamworks. So that's kind of interesting. Let's see where it goes. So I'll go into single player, uh, start a new game, and I will create my own character. Now, uh, I've never played this game, and as I said, I managed to avoid all of the spoilers, but I've spent a little bit of time in, uh, in the character creation screen before recording, just to familiarize my myself with the options so that I don't spend like an hour in here, because the, the character creation seems a little complicated. There is a lot of uh, different attributes and skills and modifiers and stuff, so I have a vague idea of a character I would like to play. I will play as a male, you are, a male uh, you are the male gender of your race, you tend to be stronger than a female, albeit with a lower constitution. It's already kind of interesting how the game uh, doesn't shy away from differ differentiating the stats from uh, a female character to a male character. It, it's usually not done in those more modern games, presumably to avoid accusations of bias or like sexist st st stereotyping, but it's also interesting uh, that uh, apparently females have uh, mm, a higher constitution score, 
which actually might be based on real world science because from what I understand uh, there has there have been uh, some some research done on the fact that apparently women are uh, like more suited towards uh, withstanding long lasting pain uh, presumably if that is true then presumably I would uh, imagine it has to do with uh, weathering childbirth in particular uh, so I will be playing as a male. I will also be playing as a dwarf because if you watch this channel for any amount of time or if you know me, uh, you know, a little bit better than you know that dwarves are my favorite uh, fantasy race in pretty much every setting. So this character gains plus one strength, plus one constitution, plus 50% to technological aptitude and two ranks to all tech skills. This character suffers minus one charisma and dexterity and is hampered in thro throwing spells, finding that they cost twice as much to twice as much to cast. Dwarf males are short, stocky, bearded people. Although very wide and stout for their height, dwarves tend to be, tend to be muscular and not fat. They are hard-working, prideful, and focused almost to the point of being humorless. Although most dwarves enjoy a good meal, dwarves tend to be quick to judge and quick to anger. Dwarves dislike elves, but are respectful to human and gnomes. Uh, and as far as the background goes, I actually going to am um, go, going to choose uh, what is it? A beat with a uh, beat with an ugly, ugly stick, because uh, it's a, it's an homage to a character I role played uh, for a really long time, a couple of years, in one of my RPG games, the tab tabletop RPGs. Uh, his name was Hargrim Stonehand, and he was uh, a disfigured, crippled war veteran. Uh, his face was so horrible that people didn't really even uh, want to, to look at him. So I, I want to choose this background to commemorate that character. So it says, you are ugly. There is just no other word for it, unless you consider hideous a better word. Children free, free, flee from you in terror, and even the kindest of souls find it difficult to stand your presence for long. As a result of your uh, contourance, you take extreme penalty to beauty minus six, but you have to you have had to defend yourselves from frequent attacks, and you gain a bonus to strength plus two and dexterity plus two, and a slight bonus to all of your combat skills. So basically, people are not going to like me uh, initially. I imagine, judging from the reaction modifier, uh, but it's going to make me a little bit better in combat. Uh, and here comes the actual uh, character screen. Now, as I said, I've spent some time here uh, before just to prepare myself, and I decided I'm going to put at least one more point in co to charisma because it seems uh, your charisma score uh, directly involves impacts your number of maximum followers. This is the number maximum number of people who follow this character because of leadership. So. Uh, as, as is currently, I am limited to one follower, which seems really low, and it seems to deprive me of an opportunity to meet uh, more interesting characters along the way. So I will put at least one point in to have two followers instead of one. Uh, as for the remainder of points, I will put one point in melee just to be a little bit better at it in the beginning. Uh, I will put one point in persuasion. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to raise charisma more, but maybe I'll find uh, some items that help with that. I would like to be at least a little bit persuasive, because I prefer solving conflicts non-violently in RPGs, if possible. I, I know that a dwarf is, is not the best character for that, but oh well. Mm, and obviously I will go into technology uh, as a dwarf. So I've been thinking, as you can see, uh, the there are a lot of branches of uh, technological skills. There is herbology, uh, elect electric, uh, gunsmithy, uh, blacksmithing, chemistry, explosives, mechanical, and therapeutics. And I've been thinking about which ones to specialize in. And I guess for now I'll go uh, rather heavily into blacksmithing. Because mm, that seems to, you know, uh, to... what's the word? 
to fit naturally with me being a dwarf and also with my rather high strength score, I guess I be, will be more focused uh, in melee. And as a second branch uh, of, of technological skills, I think I might later go into uh, mechanics. Uh, there are like traps and uh, even mechanical companions because you can create a mecha mechanized arachnid who follows you as a companion, so that might be interesting and also useful. Uh, but I've spent all of my character points for now uh, and I'm at 26 uh, technological aptitude. Mm. Uh, so, with that uh, being done, I guess I, I'll, I'll quickly highlight uh, the different attributes and what they do. Uh, strength. As physical muscle power, strength determines how much damage can be inflicted and absorbed. Weapons have a minimum strength to operate them effectively. So this is obviously useful for a character who wants to fight, fight in melee. A constitution. The endurance limits of the body. Constitution determines fatigue and resistance to poison and some spells. Dexterity. As an overall body coordination, dexterity affects default abilities in more skills than any other stat. Beauty. As physical appearance, beauty affects the initial reaction of the people to this character, which I have almost the lowest possible beauty uh, uh, you, know, you can have. I have two and I imagine one is the lowest. Um, intelligence. As mental power, intelligent, intelligence affects several skills, as well as being the limiting factor in learning of spells and technological skills. So I will have to upgrade my intelligence more as I go through the game, if I want to advance through the technological trees. You can see here, uh, minimum intelligence 13, and so on. Uh, willpower. The ability to resist mental influences, willpower limits spellcasting, affects haggle and contributes to hit points, fatigue and certain spell resistances. The ability perception, the ability to notice surroundings, perception also affects the ability to use ranged weaponry. And charisma, the sum of personality and charm, charisma affects the ability to persuade others and change their initial reaction. Uh, and there is health, fatigue, and there are all those others, other derived stats and resistances. Uh, so, I think I'm more, more or less ready. I am a little bit worried uh, that I create a character that's too weak to actually effectively play the game, because those older, guy, older games can be quite unforgiving when it comes to, you know, uh, to, when it comes to character builds, and it's pretty easy in some of them to actually, you know, s lock lock yourself from progressing further because you've created a character that's too incompetent to accomplish anything. So hopefully, I'll manage to to go through the game. As I said, I know nothing about it, and I haven't read any guides or anything like that because I didn't want them to influence the way I create my character. I just wanted to go with the flow and, uh, you know, create something that I myself found interesting. So hopefully it will be playable. Uh, I can go further. Now, interestingly also, it seems that before you start the game, you have an opportunity to buy some items. Mm. And I think I'm going to buy a sword. Because... Mm. 1-8 damage, 2-9 uh, quality sword. Okay, I have just enough gold for a sword because it seems I don't have a weapon, I only have a suit. Uh, and obviously it would... Uh, I would prefer the, the axe because I find it to be a more iconic dwarven weapon, but I can't afford it. Uh, but I would need some kind of a weapon, right? Uh, um, so... Mm -hmm. What are those icons for? I guess you can maybe haggle or gamble with the shopkeepers, but maybe not with this one in particular, because he's just a, like a starting uh, character before... He's not even a character, it's, it's just a part of the character creation. Uh, but I guess I'm not going to buy anything else. I could buy like a healing potion, but I'm not sure how much will I need them. So it's probably better to just 
save the remain remainder of the money, maybe for something else. Okay, so let's go further. Help me, please. Oh, thank you, my friend. I haven't got much time. <coughs> you must find the boy. Find the boy and give him back his ring. Now he will know what needs to be done. <coughs> now listen, listen to me. We had to do it. He did unspeakable things to us, and we, we had no choice but to do as he said. And there are so few of us left, but the work is almost finished, and then the evil, oh, you can't imagine. He's coming back to destroy everything, everything and everyone. Now, please, just find the boy. <coughs> Tell him that I escaped. I came back to warn. <coughs> he will know what to do. You, my friend, it's all up to you. Can't believe it. I mean, you and and then the zeppelin and. And the fire! And the altar says that... Do you have any idea what all of this means? Okay, I have to say once again, I love the music in this game. I love how melancholic it sounds and I'm certainly digging it and, and, and waiting for more of it. Um, but, uh, well, the intro already was kind of, uh, you know, explosive. Uh, it seems uh, the, the Zeppelin I was traveling on was attacked by two uh, aeroplanes and pretty much bombed or something. But uh, it also seems the, the planes themselves were brought down uh, in the crash, so like in the explosion. So maybe I can find uh, the pilots or something around here, you know, if they crashed nearby. Uh, and also I've received some ring from a, from a dying man. Uh, and he asked me to to return it to a, to a boy and say something about someone who has returned to destroy something uh, and uh, supposedly uh, whoever that that someone is uh, has forced the dying man to do something horrible for him uh, presumably by threatening or torturing him um, so i guess this is the you know initial mm, the initial uh, starting point of the plot and no doubt the game will elaborate more uh, but there's also this hooded person here uh, who seems to be surprised by something 
Mm. By the gods, man, I almost died here. Didn't you see the crash? You speak! I, I mean, of, of course you speak. What am I, a blathering idiot? Wait, what, what did you say? Maybe I should be writing all of this down. Huh, fumbles in his pockets, in the pockets of his robes. Okay, so... I'm not sure what his, po what his point is, and it seems my character uh, kind of shares my, uh, my disbelief and my feelings of being lost, because both the, of the options pretty much say that I have no idea what he's talking about. Uh, I'd like you to ha help you out here, but I'm a bit confused. I am at a loss here. I, I, I don't quite know what to do. Uh, I mean, you are the... the oh, of course you are. I mean, you do know who you are, right? Of course you do. What, what, what sort of brainless, half-baked question is that for the... the, uh, the uh, what, 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 what do you call yourself? Wait, does he know me? Like, it, it seems that he was expecting someone? But he's kind of surprised uh, that he has found me instead? Uh, please, sir, slow down and tell me what it is that you're asking. I don't want to be particularly rude to him, even though I think he's being insensitive, because I've literally survived a, you know, a great, a great uh, crash, which it seems I'm the only survivor of, and instead of asking if I'm okay, or maybe, you know, treating my wounds or something, he's babbling about something I don't even know, but... Please, sir, slow down and tell me what it is that you're saying. Please, forgive me, I, I'm making a bloody mess of this whole affair. My name is Virgil, sir, and I'm new to the Panari religion, uh, your religion, and I... Oh, 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 wait! I... Uh, hereby dedicate, no, no, uh, commit my life to the living one. I, Virgil, am at your service, sir. Okay, that's, that's pretty weird, because it seems he thinks I'm some kind of a religious figure, some kind of a messiah. He calls me the, the living one, and he has literally pledged his life to my service, which is kind of weird and creepy, because again, even disregarding, I, I, I would find that pretty creepy in any circumstances uh, if somebody uh, decided I'm some kind of a messiah and I didn't know what, what is it about. But in this instance, I find it kind of almost borderline insulting because I've literally almost died, everyone else is dead, uh, and he doesn't seem to particularly care. Uh, he, he, didn't, he didn't even ask if I'm okay or anything like that, so... What do you mean, the living one? The living one. Quit, quit speaking in riddles. Yes, yes, of course. You see, you're him. I, I mean, the uh, the reincarnation of our uh, what's his name? I I can never remember. And and I, I'm always getting mixed up with the other fellow, the the bad one. You, um, well, you know how all of those old elven names sound the same. <laughs> uh, hmm. Wait, what? He says I'm a reincarnation, but then he says old elven names that sound the same. So is he implying I am a re reincarnated form of some elven god? Because I am a dwarf. Uh, like, how does that work? And I wonder, what would the elves think about it? Uh, I don't think I'm quite getting the gist of it, old boy. Yes, right. Uh, just give me a moment here. You, you see, the Panari. That's the religion that was formed around the things that he said. I, I mean, that you said. Oh, forget it. Let, let's start at the beginning. Or this beginning, since there is a lot more that came before this. You are the reincarnation of a powerful elf who the Panari worship and whose name is, uh... Okay, this is pretty weird, but I'm intrigued. So uh, the, 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 there's a point, you know, for the game in that. Because uh, it's definitely you know, something that's uh, intriguing, especially, I wonder I wonder if the dialogue would be different if I was an elf, and I wonder if he will ever bring up the fact that I'm not, because I, I myself, even though I know nothing about this religion, I already find it mightily weird that uh, I'm a reincarnated, um, I'm a reincarnated elf, and I reincarnated as a dwarf. And it was said in the in the main menu in the description of the races that apparently 
dwarves dislike elves, so I wonder if th this goes both ways, and if it does, uh, I wonder what would the elves think of this situation. Uh, yes? Right. Yes, uh, the name. Oh, uh, wait. I remember something. It is written in the scriptures. The living one will live again on wings of fire. No, 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 wait. I think it says, reborn on wings of fire. Oh, blood and ashes. Why do elves always have to be so damn cryptic? Hmm. So it seems he has interpreted uh, the, the, the crashing zeppelin uh, and the, the explosion as being reborn on the wings because I was in the air of fire. But that makes me wonder, did he know that the, that the zeppelin is going to crash? Like, why is he here? Also, actually, actually, wait. Let me form a daring prediction here. Uh, I predict that... Um, those two uh, aeroplanes that attacked the Zeppelin, uh, they did it on the orders of the priests of this religion because they wanted to facilitate, uh, you know, the, 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 re the, the, the re rebirth of the living one. And the prophecy said that he would be reborn on wings of fire. So they, uh, you know, orchestrated those events so that they fit the prophecy. That's my current prediction because otherwise how would he know to come here uh, and and look for me here uh, well let's see do the scriptures speak of a dying gnome and a ring hmm. i don't know about the ring but this business about the evil one returning oh, as i've said i don't know a whole lot about the panari prophecies but i think you were supposed to return and fight someone evil ah oh, bloody hell i should know more of this and to be honest, he doesn't sound like like he's the most versed in his own religion. Uh, well, or at least the religion wh whose messiah he's searching for, which is kind of funny to me. Uh, and I guess this is the point, because uh, like I, I pretty much uh, imagine this is intended as part of his character, because even his voice acting is very humorous. Uh, I So I'm meant to be some kind of great religi religious figure? This is ridiculous. Look, I understand this whole thing sounds ridiculous, especially with you being dwarven, but let me just accompany you down the mountain to Shrouded Hills. I can introduce you to my mentor, Elder Joachim. He can explain this all better than I can. I'm rather new to this whole Panari thing myself. Hmm. Ah, so he did bring it up. Me being dwarven? What the hell do you mean by that? Nothing. It's just that the Living One is the reincarnation of a powerful elf wizard. I... I can't... Uh, remember his name, but I think it's carved down on that altar. I'd have thought you'd have been an elf, or perhaps a half-elf. Okay, that's that's interesting mm, and cool that he brought this up because I've been wondering about it myself. How dare you, how dare you compare me to an elf as a dwarf? I find that insulting. As far as I can remember, the scriptures make reference to there being something unusual or unexpected about you when you return. There's nothing unusual about me. The thought of being elven is absurd. You're not actually him, just the uh, spiritual embodiment of his essence or, or something like that. Yeah, I wonder what the elves themselves will have to say about that. As I said, that's going to be interesting. Uh, whatever, I'll just speak with this York him and be done with it. The path out of here leading down to Shrouded Hills is down to the southeast. We'll stop by the Panari Shrine on the way out. See if it makes any of this any more clear. We should look for any other survivors before we leave, though. What do you think? Mm, agreed. We definitely should. So, uh, passport is for a name called Preston Radcliffe and a matchbook from the Roseboro Inn. And some gold. Ah, and this is... I guess this is the ring? Uh, this must be the gnome that that spoke to me in the intro. Uh, this is an old silver ring. The initials G JB are set in relief upon its face, and the words P. Shiler and Sons are inscribed on the inside of the band. So I'm going to take it, and I'm going to take their gold as well. It's... No, wait. Wait, wait, wait. That was my... What happened? 
I guess, ah, right, I guess this is my inventory. So I literally threw the gold out or something. Can I, oh, I guess I can't throw it out. It's still here. So I guess I had the ring uh, from the intro and those are the items that, yeah, yeah, it even, it's even displayed here. Those are, those are the items that are on the body, the passport of a man and a matchbook from a Rose Bottle Inn, which I guess is a clue to a last place he visited before boarding the Zeppelin. Can I, like, read the passport? Like, some details of it? Mm, doesn't look like it. Mm, yeah, it, it is rather distasteful for me to rob the bodies, but, you know, they are not going to need the, their, their items anymore, because they are dead. And, uh, to be honest, I have this problem in every game, because most games are not really designed with uh, such a deep uh, level of scrutinizing morality in mind. Uh, you know, the developers intend me to uh, look through those bodies and rob them uh, to, find, to find the items for quests and whatnot. Uh, Victoria Warrington, uh, nothing to loot. Uh, so I am going Lugard, Lugard Bralatstone. Nothing to loot here, so I am going to do that, even though, you know, it is kind of rude. Uh, metal plate. Um, oh, there are some wolves as well. Solomon Dune uh, has some gold, um, as well as electrolyte solution, presumably used for crafting, um, and things like that. Uh, before I explore the rest of the location, because I would like to look for... To look for... Frick! Oh, I thought he killed me already, uh, but he only knocked me down. Uh, it would be mightily embarrassing if I died to the first enemy, like, ever. Uh, I want to look, look for the planes, because uh, they've been brought down in the explosion as well. Uh, but before I do, I, I want to search through the rest of the bodies. Horace Mac McGinney. Uh, Mac Evil Eye. Nothing to loot. Just so that I just just so that I don't forget which ones I've looted and which I ones I've I didn't. Isaac Zapruder. And this one has a camera damage from the crash mm, and the thermometer. Uh, there's some uh, some some mat materials like steel and stuff that's fallen that has fallen off from the zeppelin. I am going to pick those up because they might be useful for crafting. Merwin Tumblebrook, Clarice Vorak, uh, Preston, this is the one I've robbed before, uh, Cree Melange, mm, Godfrey Castleberger, that's an interesting surname, mm, Belan Tessara and Merrick Lugerton. Okay, nothing to loot here either. So I guess I will go from the top of the location now. Uh, oh, there is another body here in the bushes. Dren Lalor. Uh, just some gold. Mm, I will go, go from the top of the location now and go all around it to first of all try to locate the planes. Mm, that attacked the Zeppelin in the first place. And second of all, just to generally explore, is there a map? Mm, logbook, inventory, maps. Uh, there is, but it doesn't seem to showcase the whole of the location. Uh, okay, this is a general map of, uh, of the land, which is apparently known as Arcanum. Uh, but it doesn't seem to showcase the whole of the location, just the vicinity. So it isn't as helpful as I would have liked it to be. Oh, this is a journal. Uh, it seems as if only I have survived the crash of IFS Zephyr. The Zeppelin was unexpectedly set upon by, a, by strange flying machines. Among the wreckage, I found a dying gnome who gave me a signet ring and bid me to find the boy who owned it with a vague warning about something that is almost here. He said that he had escaped, but I have no clues as, uh, as to where he escaped from. 
After I dragged myself from the wreckage of the Zeppelin crash, I was approached by a monk of the Panari religion. He seems to believe that I am the living one, the reincarnation of some deity of theirs. Okay, so there is a full-fledged journal. I might return to it, maybe after the end of each episode or something, to see, because it, it's written in first, per, uh, first person from the perspective of, of my character, so it might be interesting to see how different events are framed in it. Now what else? Reputation, blessings and curses, kills and injuries, uh, background, uh, curing contents, okay. Uh, uh, as I said in the beginning, th th there will be timestamps time stamps in the description, so if I will be reading the journal and you will, be not in you will not be interested in that, you can always skip that part. Uh, I will go um, throughout all of the location, exploring and whatnot. Oh, there is like a boar. How do I... Is there a quick toggle from combat on and off? It would be easier if there were, if there was. Uh, some trees. Mm. Hmm. It doesn't seem to be space. So... Oh! This is one of the, the aeroplanes. Uh, this what is this? It seems a strange flying device, but much smaller than the blimp. I've never seen anything like it. Mm. Yes, it looks very much like the machine which attacked us. And isn't that an ogre among the wreckage? It seems very unlikely that an ogre would have the intelligence to fly such a complex device. They didn't really. They destroyed themselves in the attack. Do you see that strange amulet that he's wearing? And that symbol on its face? I don't recognize it. Do you? I can say that, that I do. Ah, uh, something isn't quite right about all of this. I don't remember the, uh, scriptures talking about flying ogres and the like. We'd better get to Shrouded Hills and find Elder Joachim as soon as possible. Mm, let's do so. And be careful. These wolves are none too friendly. This strange flying machine is nothing like you've ever seen. You notice a plaque on it that bears the legend Maxim Machinery Caladon. Mm, I can't really interact with it. I can, however, uh, loot the body of the ogre bandit, and he has this, this uh, pendant. This amulet has a strange symbol on its face, uh, that of an eye in a hexagram. So I will take it, of course, because it's important evidence uh, uh, regarding the the uh, oh what's what's that large spring uh, regarding the circumstances of the crash. Mm, I guess once I start start running out of of space, I can always give some thanks to uh, Virgil. Oh, he healed me. That's cool. And it's also cool that he does that automatically, because uh, it, it saves me the hassle of micromanaging him. Uh, seems there's a cave or something, but I don't want to enter it yet. I don't want to leave the location uh, before I have explored everything else. <laughs> Show those bastards! I mean, good hit, sir. Mm, what's a kite? Like, obviously, I know, I know what a kite is as an object, but it says kite scout. Uh, Wilhelmina Carpenter. Oh, I haven't Wilhelmina's note to Jared. Mm, can I? My dearest Jared, I am abroad the IFS Zephyr, spending, no, speeding on my way to see you again. My breath catches uh, when I think that, I, that, that in two short weeks I shall, be, I shall be your wife. 
That is correct, my dear. I am accept accepting your proposal. I hope mm, that thoughts of me warm your heart on our long uh, days and nights. Uh, no, on your long days and nights guarding the Vermilion Station from the half orc looters you mentioned. Love always, Wilhelmina. Well, I guess she won't be getting married. Uh, but at least I can take this note and give it to to her would-be husband. Mm. Uh, Clarice Vorak. I've, I've looted those bodies already. Hmm. Okay, and this must be the shrine that he mentioned, right? Uh, the shrine before you is crude, made of rough stone and wood. Carved into one of the stone is this, and his spirit shall be reborn on the wings of fire in hills shrouded in fog. Archeon 516. Oh, so I guess the place of the living one's uh, return might have also been foretold? So maybe that's how he knew where to go. But I still find it suspicious. Are you blind? What in God's I mean, Better luck next time. <laughs> this creature is running away. Okay, there's some kind of an encampment. Hmm, it seems I've crippled my arm. There was a short message about it. Are you blind? What in God's I I mean, better luck next time. Oh. I lost my weapon. <laughs> Is it because I have too low of a dexterity st stat or something? Congratulations, you are level 2. Have one character point to spend. Mm. Oh, apparently I'm beauty 1 now. Because I think I've been cursed or something. Uh, oh, what would I like to upgrade? I guess for now I will upgrade melee. It, it, presumably it's something I will be using throughout all of the game. And I have high enough dexterity to do that, so... Let's do it, although, let me take a look at the mm, Featherweight Axe, minimum intelligence 11, deadly weapon. Yeah, that's also kind of tempting, but for now, I guess I'll put another point into melee. Mm, as I said, it seems to be a skill I'm going to use uh, pretty much non-stop anyway. Uh, a magic chest. Uh, unidentified mace, uh, some gold, mm, greater fatigue restore, and the sapphire. Okay, let's continue, some more wolves. Uh, it seems I'm finally cir circling back to where I was before, right? There should be the zeppelin right here. Are you blind? What in God's I, I mean, better luck next time. <laughs> I wonder if he if he stops himself uh, because he, he he was trying to say what in God's name are you doing, right? Uh, I wonder if he stops himself because he remembers that theoretically, according to his own scriptures, I am his god now. Which is kind of ridiculous, really. Um, I would really like a shortcut for the combat toggle. Mm. But there, I think I've explored everything around here. However... Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, however... Uh, there is still pa the passage here, 
which seems kind of final, but there is also like a small cave right here, so I think I'm going to go to the cave first and explore it as well before I leave the location as a whole. Um, Okay. A passage. Yep, it is some kind of a cave. Damn it, I should have saved. Um, there's a non zero possibility I'm going to get killed by the rats, which would be ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, did they kill him, or is he just knocked out? It seems he still has hit points left. Uh, it's uh, just that he has no fatigue, so th that's why maybe he, he can't get up. Hmm. I wonder, how do I heal him? Like, how do I help him recover? Uh, a barrel. Okay. Oh, there is a bunch of items. Fatigue restorer. Uh, health potion, small metal tube, rail railroad spikes, filament, broken flintlock pistol. Okay, how close, close am I to being encumbered? Quite close, so I guess I have to, I'll have to trade my items with him. Okay, he's up. Uh, hopefully we'll reach some town. Are you blind? What in God? I, I mean, better luck next time. No, I'm almost dead. I'm almost dead. Hopefully he can kill the... Whoa, that was ridiculous. I, I already have a feeling I, I might have screwed my character build, because those, those starting level mobs are owning me quite hard. Uh, uh, okay, we'll have to wait for him to... Replenish his fatigue to, to heal me. Migra migraine cure. Uh, heal lesser wounds. Uh, coal. Iron ore. Okay, this will be useful for crafting. Mm. Please help me. Somebody is dying here, apparently. Or maybe he has even already died and it's like his spirit or something. Uh. Whoa! a lot of items. Uh, okay, human bandit. Let's talk to it. The spirit appears to be in great pain. Please, I beg of you, the pain. Uh, what happened to you? I was cursed by an evil, evil priest. His name was Charles Brego, my friend and I. Only asked for something to eat, some sustenance. We were poor, wandering, and he cursed us. My friend cursed with madness, attacked me and killed me. The pain. I am cursed to be held in this realm, unable to be released. Please, I need your help. Uh, what would you have me do? I need to kill the priest, Arbala. He lives here. He points it onto your map. He's only his death will free me. Uh, okay, to be honest, I'm not sure how do I know if he's telling the truth. Uh, I don't care that much about the reward, I just care about... Because it would be pretty easy for him to lie to me and for me to kill an innocent person. So... <laughs> but sure, justice must prevail. Uh, please hurry, release me from this pain. Uh, and I guess uh, what is justice is... is remains to be determined when I learn more. There is a whole bunch of items here and I don't think I can reliably pick them all up, um, but I would like to, if not to use them, then just to sell them. Uh, so let me pick them all up and see if I have any space left. Just barely. Okay, can I... What is it that you want of me? Shall we trade? Okay, so he's not... he has he has some space left, so I'm going to transfer some of the items to him. Mm, are we getting attacked? Uh, okay, I'll keep that because that might be a quest item or something. I picked it up from the crash. I'll give him the electrolytes uh, and stuff. The music was being kind of dramatic for a second, 
that's why I was worried about being attacked. But it seems I'm... Yeah, that's not going to happen. Okay, this is quite heavy, but it's also presumably more useful to me than it, it is to him. I'm not going to use the pistols for now. Uh, uh, 300 stone. Uh, what else is heavy? I would like to encumber him uh, to the maximum of, he, of his capa capacity, because from then on I will know that I only have, uh, you know, my own inventory left, as it were. Mm. Okay, the iron ore is pretty heavy. Mm. Is there an auto sorting? Oh yes, oh yes, that's great. I love that. Uh, what else could I give him? Mm, dynamite. I'm pretty bad at throwing, so I'm not going to use that. What else is heavy? Metal plates. Uh, explosive grenade. Mm, stun grenade. I want to take all of those things, you know, maybe just to sell them at the next vendor I encounter. Uh, Okay, let's let's leave it, leave it at that. Although, what is it that you want of me? I have some more questions, if what I can. can. I uh, I'd like to know a few things about you. Oh. Hmm. So did he spend his his character points automatically? Because I spent my own, but I didn't spend his. Mm, and he's already level 2 as well. So maybe I need to... No scheme. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably safer. I'm not sure how how adept the game is at choosing builds. But it seems... What is it that you want of me? It seems asking him about himself doesn't do anything. It just shows you his character screen. Uh, more questions. What can I answer for you? Um, what do you know about this place? I don't know much about these mountains, but the Panari believe that this was the site where the Living One would come again. There's a shrine around here explaining that much. Shrouded Hills, a small village, is just a ways down the mountain. May I indulge you to answer more questions? What is it that you want of me? What can I answer for you? Um, what should we be doing now? Hmm. I think we should do two things. We should try and find the Elder Joachim and then find out who the owner of that ring is. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, to be honest, I'm now thinking, uh, presumably I might be more incompetent at assigning skill points than the game is. Uh, arrows, salt pepper. Uh, so maybe it, it is, isn't such a bad idea to keep the auto-leveling scheme, but still, I would prefer to do that on my own, if only because it gives me greater freedom, and it it uh, you know um, it makes me immerse myself more in the game if I develop my characters myself rather than uh, allowing the AI to do that. Uh, okay, so I think I'm finally ready to leave because I've explored everything. There is just this path uh, past the shrine here. Uh, so, let's go. Hmm, actually, that reminds me. I should probably save. Because uh, I almost died just a second ago. The altar should clear things up for us a bit. Hmm. It says, uh... And the spirit of Nazaradan shall be reborn on wings of fire in hills shrouded in fog, and fight the last battle with the evil one. The evil one? Who is that? I'm sorry, but I don't know. <laughs> I guess we better find out, considering you're supposed to fight him. I'm glad you find this amusing, because I don't at all. I'm sorry. I know this is all a bit much, considering what you've just been through. Let's just get to Shrouded Hills. 
Mm, can I inspect the shrine some more? Nope. Mm, what's this? Ah, okay, just a portrait of my party. Mm. Oh, someone's coming. And he's dressed similarly to an elf city dweller. Similarly to him, just in a different color. Uh, hold there, what are you doing up here? Uh, good god, man, I just survived a blazing inferno. I mean no disrespect, to, sir, but I don't trust this bastard one bit. Bloody convenient he just happened to show up here just now, don't you think? Oh, excuse my language, um, sir. <laughs> what do you recommend, Virgil? I've uh, dealt with buggers, uh, <laughs> individuals like this before. Perhaps you'll let me talk with him for a few minutes? Eh, I think I can handle myself in a conversation. Uh, listen, Virgil, I'll do the talking. I'll hear no more of it. Fine. I'm sure you know what's best to do. But be careful with him. I don't like the look in his eye. I'll do what I think is best, Virgil. Uh, the man gives Virgil a hard look, then turns to you, nodding. Yes, that's more reasonable. Now, why are you here? Uh, as I said, I've just survived the blimp crash. Uh, then you were on the IFS Zephyr and survived. Did you happen to see a gnome? His name was Preston Radcliffe. Uh, why are you so curious about this whole affair? I'm fro sh from Shrouded Hills, a town not far from here. I saw the crash and came as fast as I could. Uh, I did see a gnome. He's lying just over there. Hmm. Will he repeat? If I if I click this, will he repeat what he has said before? Why are you so curious about this? Uh, me? Oh, it's a different uh, it's a different line after all. Me? I just saw a, saw the crash and wanted to see if there were any survivors. As I've told you, I am the a survivor, and I'm making sure that there are no survivors. Now you die. Okay, let's see about that. This hmm. man was a hired killer. Someone doesn't want anyone walking away from this blimp crash. Uh, yes, it seems that way. Perhaps it has something to do with the gnome? Hmm. Yes, that may very well be the case. It might be a good idea to find out who owns that ring. Uh, perhaps there will be answers in Shrouded Hills. Yes, let's go to Shrouded Hills. Hmm. Because to be honest, uh, the gnome did say that, that they escaped from someone? Uh, as from someone that tortured them, so this person might have been hired by, by that person to hunt down the gnome that escaped. But, uh, regardless, this episode has been long enough, so I'm going to save. Uh, oh, it gives you a quick rundown. That's cool. Uh, of, of what you were doing before. I'm going to save. Uh, and actually end it here. That's all for this one, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!